It was a Saturday morning around 9 a.m. when we got multiple calls that there was a fire working at an apartment complex in Mesa. When our crews first arrived, they found a great deal of flames and smoke working from third floor balconies and other apartment uh, windows uh, at that apartment complex. It was about 9 a.m. from what I can remember. Um, I hear my mom wake up and she smelt smoke. And at that point, um, she knocked on my door really hard and she's like, Vicky, I, I smell something, something's not right. We heard, uh, we both had waken up due to a, a door, our doorbell went off and then a loud knock happened. So then my mom, you know, we just opened the door um, and that's when flames kind of exploded almost into my mom's face, actually. Smoke was just everywhere. I could even see my bed that was maybe three feet behind me. So then I tried opening up the window. The first time it jammed and I was like, great, I'm going to have to break the window. I had to like hurry up and untwist it. The second time I pulled it open, that's when we we're screaming because we didn't have our phones on us. And I'm like, Maybe the fire department isn't coming. I'm not sure what's going on. And at that point, you know, I was holding my daughter out the window so she can get fresh air because, I mean, the whole room was just covered in smoke. And I was just like, just please, just someone save my, my three-year-old daughter. That's all I cared about. When we were pulling up to park, laying in the supply line, um, I looked up and saw the little three-year-old face and mom's face above her with smoke coming out of the top of the window, frantically, um, you know, waving their hands and trying to get our attention. And I knew we had to act pretty quickly because I didn't know how far the fire had progressed into their apartment. At that point, that's when the, the you know, the, the firefighter was just like, you know, hand, hand over your daughter. So then I did and they brought us down one by one and, you know, thankfully, you know, we're here. The latter uh, 273 from Tempe, our uh, automatic aid partners, were able to come over and put up a second ladder right next to it. So we had two ladders to assist the grandmother coming down. I didn't even realize when we first were pulling up that there was three people in the apartment. The victim rescues off of ladders don't happen that often. If you look just around the valley, we typically build out and not up. The complexity of it is just, it's the time it takes. When somebody is trapped and whether it's trapped by smoke or trapped by fire, um, we don't have a lot of time uh, available to us. Everybody performed on that day. Everybody did exactly what they said they would do, exactly what they trained to do, and they didn't need a lot of supervision and oversight from whether they're company officers or their battalion chiefs. They just did what they've been training for for probably an entire career. They saved our lives, you know? I mean, we, I mean, the fire wasn't necessarily, you know, in our apartment, but the smoke, you know, could have easily killed us. and. That's why I wanted, you know, to have some time to thank each and every one. How are you doing? Thank you guys so much. You're I remember you. You're Hi, I don't know who you are, but thank you. No, no less respect. I remember you. Yes. You know, because, I mean, there's nothing what we can really do. I mean, yeah, we bought a cake and a card, but, I mean, it's not like, you know, we can, I can repay them, you know, so. We run a lot of calls throughout, throughout the every day and most of the time you have no idea the outcomes of the calls. So it's always a treat when we get to meet the family after the fact um, to know that we, we train really, really hard. We work out, we practice, we pull hose lines on shift. Um, we're fighting for more police officers and more firefighters and more trucks to be on the streets. Uh, and this is the reason we're doing that. When we have a call like this, we're prepared and we have the manpower to make sure that we get everybody out safe. So there are several things we want to remind people about. First of all, cooking fires are the number one cause of residential fires. So what we need people to remember is that you do not want to leave food unattended. And so people have to do due diligence and take that extra time to check monthly to make sure that their smoke alarms are working. If you live on a multi-level floor or if you live up on the third floor, for instance, have a plan in place on what would I do in the event of a fire. So there are a great number of things that you could do to prevent fires as well as the precautions you can take when you're involved in a fire. And what we want people to do is go to your city's fire department websites to take a look at some of the things that you can do to prepare yourself and your family.